I was a really bad artist, so I stopped pretty quickly, but I was really good at curating, really good. So I, I was very good at organizing people. And that's my skill, really, I think. And so I opened a gallery. And one of the first things I did, we showed very difficult work, incredibly difficult. That's my thing. I like difficult work. We also showed work which was easy enough. But my very first thing was grabbing that press release that people get when they go into a gallery. That was my very first thing. And I said, every artist, you're not touching this. You're not coming anywhere near this. This is me, okay? And I pretty much decide that if you can't say something in the first sentence, then you've got no reason to be writing that kind of thing, you know? And I've been to New York in, on Thursday night. I've been around those galleries and I can't understand the gobbledygook they come up with in those press releases that we read, you know, it's impossible. And it is, it's designed to keep you out. It's really, I really do believe that. Um, and I can read very difficult, complicated art theory because that's what I've been doing my whole life. But that doesn't mean I need to speak that way. And it certainly doesn't mean I need to um, confound other people. Um, if you want, I can tell you why I'm very clear about um, the way I present art. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah? So it's connected with America, actually, because um, one of my art, when I had an art gallery, um, I, when I was a bad artist, um, when I was a good curator, I've never really had enough to pay the bills with art, you know, because I, I chose quite difficult work. And so for 20, 25 years, I've been a guide in Europe with North American students. So I've been taking North American students around London, Paris, Rome, Florence, you know, on a guided tour. And so I take them into art galleries. And so when you're dealing with some 15 year old kid from Wisconsin, and you're trying to explain a very complicated process, you need to be clear about what you're saying. And to this day, when I'm making my videos for YouTube, I say to myself, would that kid understand what I'm saying? Because otherwise I don't understand what I'm saying sometimes, you know? So I have to go back and check the language. And language is a great way of really, it, like you say, keeping people out. It, it is, it's, um, it's designed that way. We know it's designed that way. It's how many times have you read something and you just can't grasp it, you know? I do it all the time. I was reading, I was reading about Copernicus. There you go. I was reading about Copernicus because I'm working on something at the moment. And the first website I read, no idea what they were talking about. I mean, for me, it could be that actually the, the I can still think that everything revolves around us after looking at this website, you know? But then the next one just explained it really clearly and really simply. And you can explain something as complex as Copernicus in five minutes, you know, you can do that. You can explain a bit about art in 15 minutes. The basics, that's all I'm trying to explain. Yeah, you know what got me, you got me thinking about um, this idea of art in education and even like remedial education. Uh, some years back, I did a profile of an artist working in Brooklyn who basically said they cut him off after the third grade and he never got an art class since. And because right. um, of course, art in those grades isn't even about art interpretation. It's just about getting your hands wet with watercolors or whatnot. Right. But I'm thinking now that there should be classes all through middle school, high school, that kind of do what you're doing, where you kind of teach people how to look at art, how to interpret what, what they're seeing. Uh, one excellent example of this, I mean, there's there's a few, we're gonna talk about them, but the first one that comes to mind as I'm, as I'm talking about this is you actually educated me on how to look at the Statue of David by saying, here's, here's a moment just before the altercation and here's why this is interpreted this way. And then he explained the rock behind his back and kind of all the other details. Uh, I'm gonna link to every single video that we talk about, obviously, so that people can experience your videos uh, and, and kind of be part of this discourse. But um, I hadn't thought of the statue yeah. of David that way. I hadn't thought of him as a, as a frame a frame out of a moment in a larger story. I never really even looked at a 
a statue that way before, a sculpture. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that's the kind of art education that we actually need in school beyond just getting your hands wet with watercolors. I think what you're doing is, is an example of what's needed. I think in, in a way it's um, the way they teach art in schools and the way it is the same way um, these art galleries are functioning as well. You know, they're not, you're not seeing it within the context, you know, you're not seeing it um, for what it really means. So. Um, you go to Florence, for example, and, you know, you see there's two other copies of David, and then there's the real David in the academia. <laughs> and you go to Florence, and literally on the way to, you know, you're going from your hotel to the academia, and you're going to see a thousand Davids on the street being sold, you know, little models and all this kind of stuff. And this was my plan originally. I wanted to, my very first videos are taking something incredibly familiar and making you look again. You know, it's like, what does that actually, what does that actually mean? And the only way you'll ever understand David is to understand Florence at that time. It's the only way. David means nothing otherwise. It's, it's a, you know, it's a cool statue. It looks great, but it, you know, what does it actually mean? And I think, you know, um, I get a lot of people on my, on my, on my site who, who put comments like, great art doesn't need explaining. And I'm thinking, well, why click on a website called Great Art Explained to start with? <laughs> but secondly, it's not about, I'm not trying to make people, um, tell people how to feel or to, you know, or how to think, but just to look at things as they were. Yeah. Mona Lisa means nothing unless you understand it. It's, yeah. a, it's a great painting, it's, it's cool. It's, um, I'm, I'm mystified by that. And I actually, I'm, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but yeah. that comment just pissed me off because it, it doesn't necessarily need to be explained to somebody who's been educated in how to look at it. Yeah. And to assume that everybody has that eye, everybody can develop that eye. Yeah. But th that gets straight to the point is to even say that is, is also part of the filter that keeps people up. Well, if you don't get it, then you don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. Bullshit. No, no, it oh. is total bullshit, but it's, um, it's people thinking that, you know, if you can't understand something on an aesthetic level, then it doesn't mean anything. And that's rubbish. That's so beyond rubbish. It's like, does does astronomy need explaining? Yeah, it does actually. You know, <laughs> looking in the sky isn't enough, I'm afraid. Um, and and so yeah, there's um I do think education is really important. I, I think that because I was dealing with teachers in America and Canada, North America for so long, and and I and I would teach these kids about art who didn't have any art lessons, actually, like none, you know, no history of art at all. Um, and I would say, oh, America's really bad, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then I'd realize, actually, my country's pretty bad as well when it comes to art education. You know, we are just throwing them in a box of paints. Yeah. And that isn't enough, you know, it doesn't, it, you know, it, it, we need some critical thinking is not difficult for an 11 or 12 year old. It really isn't. You know, I was dealing with, I was talking to my 12 year old niece last week um, and she had an art project on a really bad artist, like appalling. It wasn't art at all to me, um, but what can I say to her? But, but the great thing was that she could discuss why she liked something and why not. And I've always said, when I took my nieces and nephews to art galleries in London, to modern art galleries, and I'd say to them, look at that painting, what do you like? It's like, I don't like it pick out something that's all you need you know just to start thinking about things differently 